Kathleen Collins was born in Jersey City, New Jersey in 1942 and died in 1988. She was a black feminist author, playwright, filmmaker, and educator during her lifetime and was known as Kathleen Collins, Kathleen Conwell, or Kathleen Collins Pretty Man. She excelled in high school and was a member of the National Honor Society and won several awards for her writing. She then attended Skidmore College. Her education and activism, Collins received a bachelor's degree in philosophy and religion from Skidmore College in 1963. She also became very involved with the civil rights movement in Canvas, Georgia to encourage African Americans to register to vote. She then attended grad school during the night at Harvard while teaching in Massachusetts, and then received a scholarship to Paris Sorbonne University in France, where she got a master's degree in French literature and cinema. Collins was the first black American woman to produce a feature-length film. It was adapted from a Henry Roth short story. This was followed by her film Losing Ground, which she wrote and directed. Both films won several awards at film festivals. Kathleen Collins died in 1988 at age 46 from breast cancer. Her daughter Nina was left to restore, reissue, and also publish the bulk of her work, as a lot of it was not yet published. Kathleen Collins wrote a collection of stories titled Whatever Happened to Interracial Love, and I will be focusing on the first short story of this collection. Whatever Happened to Interracial Love was compiled by her daughter Nina and published in 2016. The first short story is entitled Exteriors and is a monologue of a director shooting a scene in which a couple breaks up. The director is giving instructions to someone unknown about lighting. I will be focusing on this short story. Okay, it's a six floor walk up, three rooms in the front, bathtub in the kitchen, roaches on the walls, a cubbyhole of a john with a stained glass window. The light? They've got light up the butt. It's the tallest building on the block, facing nothing but rooftops and sun. Okay, let's light it for the night. I want a spot on that big double bed that takes up most of the room, and a little one on that burlap night table. Okay, now light that work table with all those notebooks and papers and stuff. Good. And put a spot on those pillows made up to look like a couch. Good. Now, let's have a nice soft gel on the young man composing his poems or reading at his work table and another soft one for the young woman standing by the stove, killing roaches. Okay, now backlight the two of them asleep in the big double bed with that blue and white comforter over them. Nice touch. Okay, now while they're asleep, put a spot on the young woman smiling in that photograph taken on the roof of the building, and on the young man smoking a pipe in that photograph taken in the black rocking chair, and be sure to light the two of them hugging each other in that photograph taken in the park around the corner. Good. Now backlight the young woman as she lifts that enamel counter covering the bathtub and put a little light on him undressing her and a nice soft arc on the two of them nude in the doorway. Nice touch. Now dim the light. He's picking at her and teasing her. No, take it way down. She looks too anxious and sad. Keep it down. He looks too restless and angry. Down some more. She's just trying to please him. It can stay down. She's just waiting at the window. No, on second thought, kill it. He won't come in before morning. Okay. Now find a nice low level while they're lying without speaking. No, kill it. There's too much silence and pain. Now fog it slightly when he comes back in the evening and keep it dim while they sit on the bed. Now, how about a nice blue gel when he tells her it's over? Good. Now go for a little fog while she tries not to cry. Good. Now take it up on him a little while he watches her coldly, then up on her when she asks him to stay. Nice. Now down a bit while it settles between them and keep it down while he watches her. Just watches her. Then fade him to black and leave her in the shadow while she looks for the feelings that lit up the room. Collins uses the different lightings of a scene to add depth to the reader's point of view, which I thought was a very creative way of physically showing the reader how the author imagines the scene to be. One description of the scene from the New York Times really struck home with me when it stated that, quote, the reader can oscillate between being emotionally invested and distant from matters of love, end quote. Because of the outside look the reader sees from the point of the view of a director shooting a scene, it almost feels distant, and yet it is still heartbreaking. The director only gives instructions to the person in charge of lighting the scene, and none to the couple, which makes the scene feel real, as if the director is filming a real couple actually splitting up, and all she does is light the scene, not direct them. 
The lighting represents the rise and fall of emotions perfectly, as it fogs and then settles as the couple fades in and out. The last sentence ends with, fade him to black and leave her in the shadows while she looks for the feelings that lit up the room. This line is hard hitting as the two lovers in the scene have been represented by the rise and fall, the different colors of the lights, as have the readers looking in on this scene, been along for the ride of ups and downs, blue and black lights. The instructions of the director become more and more specific as the scene comes to an end and become more personal, as if the director of this movie knows the couple personally. This is exemplified by the line, no, on second thought, kill it. He won't come in before morning. Kathleen Collins shows her knowledge of the film world in this short fiction piece and draws on experiences in love and life. This carries on in the rest of Whatever Happened to Interracial Love as she explores love and race.